you know, the, the powerful people don't have too much control. They act like it's, as if they have too much control. And we, how many leaders have we seen running away from their palaces? How many leaders, while we have been alive, we saw running away from the palaces that where they have lived when the people and the masses and the mobs, when they go and attack their palaces? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Ad-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhina An'amta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين وإما نرينك بعض الذين عدهم أو نتوفينك فإلينا مرجعهم ثم الله شهيد ثم الله شهيد على ما يفعلون ولكل أمة رسول فإذا جاء رسولهم قضي بينهم بالقسط وهم لا يظلمون ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين قل لا أملك لنفسي ضرا ولا نفعا إلا ما شاء الله لكل أمة أجل إذا جاء أجلهم فلا يستأخرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون قل أرأيتم إن أتاكم عذابه بياتا أو نهارا ماذا يستعجل منه المجرمون أثم إذا ما وقع آمنتم به الآن وقد كنتم به تستعجلون ثم قيل للذين ظلموا ذوقوا عذاب الخل هل تجزون إلا بما كنتم تكسبون ويستنبئونك أحق هو قل إي وربي إنه لحق وما أنتم بمعجزين ولو أن لكل نفس ظلمت ما في الأرض لافتدت به وأسروا الندامة وأسروا الندامة لما رأوا العذاب وقضي بينهم بالقسط وهم لا يظلمون ألا إن لله ما في السماوات والأرض ألا إن وعد الله حق ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون هو يحيي ويميت وإليه ترجعون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our good deeds. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers, we are going to continue with our journey in Surah Yunus. As you know, Surah Yunus is a Meccan surah. A surah that was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was in Mecca. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's being consoled, he's being reminded Yes, we know that the disbelievers are going to go against you and they're going to try and harm you. 
they're going to try and bring so many doubts to your message. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoles the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and gives him a consolation. And this is also a consolation for all of us. Our, all of us as believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds in this ayah, ayah 46 of Surah to Yunus, he reminds the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After he reminded him like the disbelievers will reject the Quran and why they will reject the Quran and some of them will never believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then Allah also reminds the Prophet وَيَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ كَأَنْ لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا سَاعَةً مِنَ النَّهَارِ the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the Prophet when the disbelievers come to the next life they will say to one another we did not stay in the world for that long it felt like just a short while while we were trying to get to know one another that's it and now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the Prophet وسلم, those people who are against you we will punish them but we might allow you to see that. Or we might cause you to death. We might cause you actually to die. And after you die, these people will be punished in the next life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, whether we show you, O Prophet, some of what we threaten them with or cause you to die. The Prophet sallallahu saw some of the things that the people of Quraysh were threatened with. When did he see this? In the day of Badr. The leaders of Quraysh, many of them were killed in the battle of Badr. So the Prophet sallallahu he saw this with his own eyes. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has punished the leaders of Quraysh. He humiliated them and they were, many of them were killed in the battle of Badr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِمَّا نُرِيَنَّكَ بَعْضَ الَّذِي نَعِدُهُمْ أَوْ نَتَوَفَّيَنَّكَ Or we will cause you to die before that, before you see this. Allah then has said, to us is their return. فَإِلَيْنَا مَرْجِعُمْ They will come back to us. Whether you see us punishing them or not, they will come back to us. To us is their return. And Allah is a witness over what they do. Whatever they do right now, we can see so much oppression. We can see, subhanAllah, what many Muslims are going through in the world that we live in today. Those people who are propagating the dhulm, the people who are, subhanAllah, doing the oppression, do not think that Allah is unaware of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَإِلَيْنَا مَرْجِعُهُمْ They will come back to us. ثُمَّ اللَّهُ شَهِيدٌ عَلَى مَا يَفْعَلُونَ And Allah is a witness of what they do. So everything that is happening today, Every oppression that's happening, whether that is a major oppression or whether it is a minor oppression, regardless of who committed that oppression, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I am aware of it. Ya Muhammad, whether I see, whether I show you when I am punishing those who are committing the oppression or whether I don't show you that and you die before that time, I am aware of their situation. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا أَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ Never ever think that Allah is unaware what the, what the oppressors are doing. Allah is aware of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is delaying their punishment until a particular day. Until a particular day comes. And that's the next life. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am waiting for that day. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ سبحان الله So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ثُمَّ اللَّهُ شَهِيدٌ عَلَى مَا يَفْعَلُونَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ And for every community there is a messenger The ulama they said in the next life Every nation will only be judged when their prophet or the messenger comes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring every nation with their prophet. And when the prophet comes, he will testify against them. Say, Ya Allah, I have delivered the message that you have given to me in order to give it to them. I have given it to them. And they didn't believe. وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولِ فَإِذَا جَاءَ رَسُولُهُمْ And for every community, there is a messenger. After their messenger has come, judgment is passed on them in all fairness. 
and they are not wronged. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'm going to judge them. And then when I judge them, it, they will be judged in all fairness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not transgress against anyone. وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ Allah will never wrong anyone. Everyone will get what they deserve. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after that he says, he tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's not only your nation who says, مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدِ All the nations who came before you, they said to their prophets, وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Imagine the people of Nuh alayhi salam saying to, uh, saying to their prophet Nuh alayhi salam, this punishment that you always threaten us with, when is it going to come? When is this day of judgment that you always talk about? Bring it on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, yes, you are not the only one this was said to. وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ They always used to say to the prophets, the previous prophets, when is this day going to come? وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ They ask the believers, when will this threat come to pass if what you say is true? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu say to these people, look at, if the Prophet sallallahu is saying this, what about us? Okay, this next concept, the, 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 the other concept which is about to come right now, the Prophet ﷺ is being told, قُلْ Say to them, Ya Muhammad, لَا أَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِي ضَرًّا وَلَا نَفْعًا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ Say to them, Prophet Muhammad is being told, tell them how powerless you are. You don't have anything in your hand. قُلْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِي ضَرًّا وَلَا نَفْعًا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ Say to them, Ya Muhammad, I have no power to benefit or protect myself. I don't have any power. I cannot protect myself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't have any power. So what is the important lesson we can learn from here? Sometimes you will see some Muslims who are seeking benefit from people who have already died. People who have no power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to his own prophet, tell the people, Ya Muhammad, you have no benefit for yourself. And you cannot harm your own self. I have no power to benefit or protect myself except the will of Allah. Subhanallah. If the Prophet ﷺ is telling us and telling the people, I cannot benefit myself, I cannot protect myself, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who gives protection, He's the one who gives benefit, okay? He's the one that you should ask whatever you need. Subhanallah. So, قُلْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِي ضَرًّا وَلَا نَفْعًا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, لِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ أَجَلٍ For every community, for each community, there is an appointed term. When their time arrives, they cannot delay it for a moment, nor could they advance it. Nor could they advance it. So this is, subhanallah, this is Tawheed. You know the beauty of the Makki surahs? They are filled with Tawheed. Aqeedah. So important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, the, the power is in his hands. Okay? He's the one who's in charge. No one can benefit themselves and no one can protect themselves against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says to the Prophet sallallahu these people who are arguing with you, say to them the following, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَتَاكُمْ عَذَابُهُ بَيَاتًا أَوْ نَهَارًا مَاذَا يَسْتَعْجُلُ مِنْهُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ Tell them, O oh Prophet, imagine if his torment, if the punishment of Allah were to overcome you by night or day, do the wicked realize what they are really asking him to hasten? Subhanallah. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Prophet is being told, say to these people, they're always asking for the punishment to be brought forward. Say to them, what are you going to benefit from this? Because if the punishment of Allah comes, and then after that you begin to believe, it's not going to benefit you. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ مِنْ أَتَاكُمْ عَذَابُهُ بَيَاتًا أَوْ نَهَارًا مَاذَا يَسْتَعْجِلُ مِنْهُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ أَثُمَّ إِذَا مَا وَقَعَ آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will you believe in it only after it has overtaken you? Is the only time you're going to believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his punishment, is it going to be after it overtakes you? After the punishment of Allah comes to you guys and you are punished? Is that the time you're going to believe? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَثُمَّ إِذَا مَا وَقَعَ آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ آلْآنَ وَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ Now, but you always wanted to hasten it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the wrongdoers. ثُمَّ قِيلَ لِلَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا look, look how fair Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Allah is so just. just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so kind. He reminds the, the disbelievers. ثُمَّ قِيلَ لِلَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا Then the wrongdoers will be told. Okay? 
taste the torment of eternity. It will be said to them, taste the torment of eternity. Are you not rewarded except for what you used to commit? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the only punishment, I'm only going to punish you for what you used to commit. It, all the wrongs that you've done, that's, what I'm, that's what, why I'm punishing you right now. And you will be only punished with that. And then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet, these kuffar, they will continue to question. Look at what they say. O oh, Muhammad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet, they ask you, O oh, Prophet, is this true? Meaning the day of judgment is going to come? Is your message true that you are from, you are the messenger of Allah? Are you telling us, is the Quran true? The day of judgment that you are promising us, is it really true? Is it going to come? And then the Prophet is told, this is only one of three places where the Prophet was told to take an oath. Okay, to swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at what happens. The Prophet swears by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet say to them, Ya Muhammad, say, Yes, by my Lord, most certainly it is true. And you will have no escape. And you will never be able to escape from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the oppressors, they will never be able to escape from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, those who are committing oppression today, those who are killing the innocent people, those who are killing the Muslims today, those who are massacring day and night our Muslim brothers and sisters, around the world, subhanAllah, we know what is going on, subhanAllah. We can see it with our own eyes. The massacres, subhanAllah, that are, the genocide, all of these evil things that are happening, we can see them with our own eyes. What do you think about Allah? If social media is showing us what, what is going on, what do you think about Allah? How much information do you think Allah has? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the information before it even happens. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. None of us knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already has access to tomorrow's information. He has access to next year's information. Allah has access to the year after's information. Allah has access to what is going to happen millions of years down the line. He has all of that information. He has access to all of that information. Allah has said, وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ And you will have no escape. You can't, you can't run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no one is going to escape from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a Muslim, have that iman in your heart. Keep it in your heart. That this should give you comfort. This should give you what? Comfort, subhanAllah. And you should feel, alhamdulillah, consoled. And say, alhamdulillah, I went to the Salat al-Fajr, I prayed, and then I have listened to the Quran, subhanAllah, the tadabbur of the Quran. I have listened to, subhanAllah, the reflection. Okay, this is what the Quran is telling me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me, I am in charge. Don't worry about this world. I am in charge. The Prophet is being told, yes, these people who are against you, I'm going to punish them. I may show you when I'm punishing them. Or you may never see that. And you will die before it. SubhanAllah. What about us? We want to see everything. As Muslims today, we want to see everything. When the, when the oppressors are being punished, when they are committing the oppression, and the end of the... We want to see everything in just one moment. No, that's not how it works. The Prophet is being told, you're going to die tomorrow before I maybe punish these people. Or maybe I'm not going to punish them now in this life, but I will punish them in the next life. The same thing. We should, we should have that iman and that belief. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet وَلَوْ أَنَّ لِكُلِّ نَفْسٍ ظَلَمَتْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَفْتَدَتْ بِي look at, look, at the, look at the leaders and what's going to happen to them in the next life. And look at how they're going to react. Do you know the people, the leaders, the, what kind of face are they going to show in the next life? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَوْ أَنَّ لِكُلِّ نَفْسٍ ظَلَمَتْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ If every wrongdoer were to possess everything in the world, they would surely ransom themselves with it. Every wrongdoer, when he goes to the next life, if he owned everything, he would have ransomed himself with that. He would have given it to Allah. He says, Ya Allah, take all of this and please forgive me and save me from the hellfire. That's what they would have said. Imagine Fir'aun coming in the next life. And if Fir'aun owned everything, what would he have done? He would have given it to Allah and said, Ya Allah, please take all of this and just forgive me. 
That's what he would have said. وَلَوْ أَنَّ لِكُلِّ نَفْسٍ ظَلَمَتْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَفْتَدَتْ بِهِ And what else? وَأَسَرُّ النَّدَامَةَ لَمَّا رَأَوْا الْعَذَابِ They will hide their remorse when they see the torment. Okay? They will hide their remorse, their feelings. They're going to hide it. Who are they hiding it from? From their followers. Do you know the leaders? Imagine Fir'aun, Haman, Qarun, Ubay ibn Khalaf, Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab, they will come and they're standing before Allah and their followers are also there. Do you think that they're going to show emotion and cry and, and so They're not going to do that. They're going to hide it. The ulama, they said, why are they doing that? For two reasons. Two reasons. They mention, two reasons. They don't want to make themselves look weak in front of their followers. Look how arrogant these people are. The, 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 the leaders, like the top, these, these, this is how arrogant they are. They don't want to show the weakness. They're going to show a very brave face. And also, what else are they worried about? If they show, if they kind of like show their remorse and they feel like, oh, we wish we've never done this, they are scared of the followers because they're going to blame them, they're going to jump on them. It was your fault. You guys, you're the ones who caused us to do this. They don't want to show anything. They will try and look brave. Say, okay, we're going to take it. Okay. وَأَسَرُّ النَّدَامَةَ لَمَّا رَأَوْا الْعَذَابِ And then Allah said, وَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْقِسْطِ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us, and they will be judged in all fairness, and no one will be wronged. Look at how many times Allah repeats about fairness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, I am going to be a fair judge. I will not wrong anyone. You guys are wronging one another. You are committing oppression against one another, but I will not oppress you. I will be fair. I will be a just ruler. I will, I will be a, a just judge. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us. Ala inna lillahi ma fi samawati wal ard. Ala inna wa'adallahi haq. Surely to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. Allah always reminds us the tawheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one who owns everything. Everything, everything. Do you know even the weapons that are being used today? Do you know these latest weapons that are used that are so destructive? Who do they belong to? They belong to Allah. They belong to Allah. Everything belongs to Allah. أَلَا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Everything belongs to Allah. Subhanallah. Whether that is a big thing or a small thing. Everything belongs to Allah. Even the weapons people are using against each other today, they belong to Allah. أَلَا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ Remember that. Everything belongs to Allah. Everything. The technology that we have today belongs to Allah. أَلَا إِنَّ When you have that iman, alhamdulillah. Ala inna lillahi ma fi samawati. Ala inna lillahi ma fi samawati. Surely to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. Surely Allah's promise is always true. Ala inna wa adallahi haq. Also remember as a Muslim, the promise of Allah is true. Allah is going to punish those who deserve to be punished. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take, take care of the He's going to take care of the oppressors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward those people who were patient in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who believed in him, he's going to reward them. Ala inna wa'da Allahi haq. But Allah tells us, walakinna aktharahum la ya'lamu. But the majority of the people don't know this. Do you know the majority of the residents of this earth today, they don't know this stuff. What we know, what we have been told in the Quran, majority of the people don't know. Who told us Allah? That's why you see people doing crazy stuff. Because if they know this information, they wouldn't do the crazy stuff. Why are they doing this crazy stuff? Because they don't know. And then Allah tells you, The majority of these people don't know. And then he reminds us, Huwa yuhyi wa yumit. He's the one who gives life and he's the one who takes life. He's the one who causes to die people. He's the one who causes death. I am the one who gives you life, guys. And I am the one who takes, I'm going to cause you to die. وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And to him you will return. So powerful. So powerful. Just imagine when you have that iman, when you have this information, 
Not everybody has it. John and Steve and Adam and, and the guys that you know outside, many, they don't, have, they don't have this information. They haven't got this information. The majority of people don't have this information. They don't know this stuff. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the opportunity to know this now. And you have to say, Alhamdulillah. This is the beauty of Islam, subhanAllah. And this is the beauty of going back to the Quran. And this is the purpose of Fajr reflection. It's for us to go back to the Quran and reflect and think about it. Alhamdulillah. And know that you are from the few, mashallah. And know that you're the chosen people. You are the chosen people. Not many people have this information. Allah just remember that ayah. Just always remember. Everything belongs to Allah. But the majority of people don't know this. And the promise of Allah is true. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make those who take heed from the Quran. Say Ameen. So you have to take heed from this Quran and say, SubhanAllah, I want to take heed from this. And also comfort. You should go home right now holding your head high, say Alhamdulillah, and also feeling peaceful, okay? Knowing that Allah is in control of everything. Knowing, not, not the, the powerful people don't have too much control. They act like as if they have too much control. And we, how many leaders have we seen running away from their palaces? How many leaders, while we have been alive, we saw running away from the palaces that where they have lived, when the people and the masses and the mobs, when they go and attack their palaces? That should be an ayah for us. Someone who was a leader for 10, 20, 30 years in his country and sitting on the throne and one day comes and the person is running for his life. Alas, it's gone. No one can cause Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can go and make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala run away from his throne. Okay? But all these other people who are called like leaders or kings or the queens or the time will come and they'll either die or they'll run, they'll, de they'll be deposed from their position, and they have no power. Allah says, huwa yuhyi wa yumit wa ilayhi turja'oon. And you'll only go back to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who take heed from the Quran. Jazakumullah khairan for your patience. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.